Hello to you. I do hope you're well. We are continuing our look at the Christian beliefs and teachings with a look at life after death. So quite a lot to talk about today. We'll be discussing resurrection, judgment, heaven and hell. So let's get started by just defining those key terms, shall we? And the first one is resurrection, which means rising from the dead. And of course, Christians believe that Jesus rose from the dead on Easter Sunday, which demonstrated his divinity and gives them hope for life after death as well. Our next key term is judgment, the belief that God will decide whether each person should receive eternal life or eternal punishment based on their earthly life. So he will hold them to account and then either reward them with heaven or punish them with hell. So that brings us on to our final two key terms. Heaven, this is the belief that after death, Christians can enter a state of being with God for eternity. And we're going to talk about whether that is a physical place or a spiritual state. And then finally, hell. This is the belief in a place of eternal suffering or a state after death of being in separation from God. So, again, we will look at those contrasting views as to whether heaven and hell are physical places or spiritual states. Before we do that, though, let's just talk about the biblical evidence for resurrection and judgment. So we're going to start by talking about resurrection and in particular, of course, the resurrection of Jesus. So Christians believe that Jesus rose from the dead on Easter Sunday, which followed his crucifixion on Good Friday. And this is, of course, a really, really important event because it gives Christians hope for life after death. It represents a victory over death and sin. So a really significant event. St. Paul wrote that if Christ has not been raised, your faith is pointless and you are still in your sins. So this event, the resurrection on Easter Sunday, provides the foundation for the Christian faith and it provides confirmation that Jesus was the son of God. And in terms of the influence of it, it gives them hope for salvation from sin and life after death. Our next key biblical text then is the parable of the sheep and the goats. And this is in Matthew 25. Christians believe that God will judge all of humanity, and that is because of what is taught in this parable. It teaches judgment is based on the performance of six good works. For example, feeding the hungry and caring for the sick. So this parable teaches that God will separate the sheep and they are the people who have performed good works from the goats. And they are the people who have not done that. The sheep will be rewarded with heaven and the goats condemned to eternal damnation. Now, this raises really interesting questions, doesn't it, about the criteria for entering heaven and what kind of things could lead to someone being punished with eternal damnation in hell. And so we've got to ask, well, is judgment going to be based on work? So on what you've done, is it going to be based on faith, which means what you've believed or could it be based on both of them? If you were arguing that we need good works, you could quote from the epistle of James, which teaches that faith without works is dead. So you can't just believe in Jesus and think that that is going to secure your salvation. You've also got to perform the good works that he commanded. For example, those good works that he teaches about in the parable of the sheep and the goats. So feeding the hungry, giving drink to the thirsty, clothing the naked, inviting strangers in, caring for the sick and visiting prisoners. You could argue as well, though, that we need faith alone. And Jesus said himself, whoever believes in me will have eternal life. So does that teach that just having faith alone is sufficient, that that is all that you need in order to be Saved. Some Christians might say that because of original sin, we can't actually earn our own salvation. So we have to put our faith into Jesus and have faith that his death on the cross as the act of atonement is enough to pay the price for human sinfulness. And then that his resurrection on Easter Sunday, again, can give us hope. And we have to therefore have faith that he has achieved the ultimate victory over sin and that he has opened the door to eternal life. So very interested to hear your thoughts on this. Do you think that judgment is based on good works? Is it based on faith or could it be based on having both? We are now going to talk about where you actually go after you have been judged. So remember, heaven is seen as a place of reward, whereas hell is 
talked about as a place of punishment. And it's important we know that some Christians see them as physical places, whereas others see them as spiritual states. And then we will also, of course, in preparation for a four mark influences question, talk about the impact that these beliefs have in terms of the actions they lead to and the feelings they lead to as well. So let's talk about heaven first, shall we? And our key quote for the physical interpretation of heaven is that Jesus said, my father's house has many rooms. So some Christians believe that heaven is a physical state. This means that your physical body will be resurrected and you will live for eternity in heaven. However, some Christians believe that heaven is a spiritual state. And St. Paul wrote that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So that might suggest that only your soul can go to heaven. Some Christians believe that heaven is a spiritual state of happiness. This means that your soul leaves your physical body and lives in a spiritual place for eternity. So what is the influence of this belief in heaven? What impact does it have on a Christian? We could say it influences them to do good work so they will be rewarded with heaven. They follow God's laws again so that they are rewarded with eternal life in heaven. They might pray to God. They might have hope and they also might feel comforted because of this belief. What about hell then? And remember, hell is seen as the place of punishment. It is described in the book of Revelation as the fiery lake of burning sulfur. And that, of course, leads to some Christians believing that hell is a physical place of physical pain. And so that teaching could be used to teach or to argue that um, in hell, your physical body will be tortured and punished for eternity because you will be in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. However, not all Christians believe that it is a physical place of physical, physical excuse me, punishment. I'm making up words now. Instead, they believe that it is a state. For example, the Catechism of the Catholic Church says that hell is a state of exclusion from God. So what might this mean? Well, some Christians believe that hell is a self-imposed state of separation from God. This means that hell is spiritual separation from God for eternity. Now, some people might think that that is not a sufficient punishment, that actually it needs to be a physical place so that you can be punished for what you've done. But of course, believing that it is a spiritual state instead might be more compatible with the belief that God is omnibenevolent. So for both heaven and hell, I wonder, do you think that Christians are right to understand them as physical places or should they be seen as spiritual states for your soul? In terms of the influence of hell, then, of course, the impact is the Christian would try to avoid sin because they don't want to be punished with eternal damnation. They would follow God's laws again because they don't want to face punishment. They would pray to God for forgiveness from their sins. They would, of course, feel scared about the prospect of being punished in the fiery lake of burning sulfur. And they may even question God's omnibenevolence because, of course, the idea that people could be sent to face eternal punishment might be seen as contradicting God's omnibenevolence. Because if he was all loving, surely he would forgive everybody rather than making sure they are punished for eternity. So the really interesting questions raised there. Uh, and as I say, I would be really interested to hear, do you think that it is better to see heaven as a physical place or as a spiritual state? And that brings today's video to an end. Thank you very much for joining me. Remember, you can download the full revision PowerPoint now by clicking on the link below. Thanks for watching and good luck with your studies.